G'day. I hope you're enjoying your Saturday morning. I'm here today because I want to inspire you. I want to light a spark in you about global collaborative software development. Hi. I'm Simon. I'm from the River in a Cancer Care Center over in Wagga Wagga. Back in April last year, it seems like a bit of a... seems a while ago now, the first picture of a black hole was taken. This was to test Einstein's theory of general relativity. This black hole, though, it was only 40 micro arc seconds in our sky. That's like trying to take a picture of a grain of sand on the Gold Coast while standing in Perth. To achieve that, we needed to build an Earth-sized telescope. We don't, we don't have Earth-sized telescopes. So they, 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 with software and atomic clocks, they linked, 200 scientists linked telescopes all around the world to be able to take this picture. This global network of telescopes recorded a huge amount of data. To be able to process that data and to convert it into the image that we see here, they needed a lot of code. They collaborated on that code. They used open source software that was already available in the, in the Python scientific ecosystem. And they wrote their own software, which they also made open source and shared with each other to make this possible. All that code, you can go to this link down here and you can find it. I want us in medical physics to collaborate like that. I want us to build software and share it with each other. And it's already happening. There are medical physicists around the world who are writing software in their clinics and they're sharing it for people to go and use. And I and you in your center can pick it up, build on it, make it better. And in the end, patients all over the world can be treated better as a result. My goals for this talk is I want to inspire you about what's possible when we share software with each other. I want to equip you to provide an over I'm going to provide a short overview of the Python open source uh, scientific ecosystem and the phys medical physics ecosystems. And I want to give you a bit of an insight into how I began learning Python. And then I want to show you a few tools that we use in our clinic equipped, uh, empowered by these, this, this, this ecosystem. Through my talk, um, I'm going to be somehow in two places at once. I'll uh, let you in a secret. This is actually uh, pre-recorded. Um, I'll be uh, active in the chat window. Please ask questions and I'll also copy in uh, links to the slides in this video as well. Uh, if you do uh, uh, t uh, download those slides, uh, you're free to then click the other hyperlinks in here. A lot of, there's a lot of hyperlinks in here, so I'd recommend uh, downloading those slides. So, um, just quickly, uh, here is a range of libraries. Um, you can see some Num NumPy, SciPy, there's uh, some machine learning libraries, and there's some tools that I like to use. Um, I'm not going to go into all these, uh, but these are uh, I've hyperlinked the documentation for each of these tools, so you can actually go and have a read yourself and, and search around and find more about them. But these are the tools that scientists around the world uh, use day to day to uh, achieve their science when they use Python. Um, in medical physics, and, I can, and there is an ecosystem that is growing. Um, you can uh, I, I, once again hyperlink, hyperlink to each of the documentation for these tools. Um, there's some brilliant tools here, and I, I've probably missed some too. Um, but here's some of the things that we, we use, and people, medical physicists around the world use. How did I begin learning Python? Well, I was quite com com I, was, I was quite comfortable with MATLAB, and I found this. Uh, this document called NumPy for MATLAB users, and it was uh, it was amazing. Uh, it was al allowed me to have the MATLAB syntax that I was familiar with here, um, the equivalent NumPy syntax, and also what it would do. And this this table was was on was on one of my screens while I was programming on the other. Uh, it was my go-to document for a long time. Uh, it was very helpful. I hope you guys can find this helpful. Um, I also used um, the Jupyter Notebook, which used to be called IPython Notebook. Um, you can go to this link here to uh, give it a, have a play with it, but you can also install it on your own machine and use that. Now, I want to provide you guys some examples of three examples of tools that we use in our clinic. Um, we've got an ME Density Comparison Utility, a Winston Lutz Arc tool, and some vac and a VAC bag auto segmentation. All of these available with are within are all these are within available within PyMedFiz. Uh, you can download them and use them yourself. Um, granted. Uh, 
they are optimized for use here. Um, and I'd certainly appreciate uh, people helping uh, to make uh, be able to make it easier to use at other clinics. Now, the first one, this MU density comparison tool. Uh, there's a link here which you guys can click on yourself. Um, we'll jump over there. This is to provide a demo of this. So, uh, you click on that link and you come to this website here. Um, and quite neat. Um, you, the, the, we, we use this um, within our clinic to uh, compare a range of data streams uh, between Mosaic, Monaco, uh, the Linux in the TRF and ICOM streams, and also also DICOM. Um, but I'll, I, we have both a, a simple and an advanced mode available. Um, so you can click advanced mode over here where you can edit gamma parameters and also choose to have different data streams as your input and output. Um, yeah, your evaluation and reference, sorry. And so if I, we'll go back out of advanced mode for this demo though. So let's say we'll click on the blue clinic and we'll use this patient 979797. And you can see here there's a, a plan in, in, in Monaco. Uh, it's a VMAT plan. Um, and then what we can do is we can actually select, the, these are all the deliveries that's happened on the machine for that, for that plan. And so we can actually click here and select one of those deliveries. And you can see here um, that the MU matches. That's a pretty good sanity check as a first step. And then we can actually run this calculation. And you can see here um, that as a result, uh, it creates, let's have a wait for this PDF to show up. Uh, you can see the reference MU density, which has come from the Monaco backend. Uh, and the evaluation MU density, which has come from the live stream log file, the, the log files recorded from the ICOM stream. And you can see here's a gamma comparison. Cool. So that's the uh, our MU density comparison tool. Uh, it helps us, uh, it au augments what we do here for our uh, uh, patient specific QA. Um, we have a, uh, a Winston Lutz Arc tool uh, where we. Uh, Instead of just doing a Winston Lutz at uh, the four cardinal angles, uh, and um, we wanted to be able to take a Winston, do a Winston Lutz for many angles, and so th that was also, but that, that ended up being time prohibitive. Um, so we d developed a Winston Lutz arc where um, it takes one minute to deliver a dynamic uh, Winston Lutz beam, um, and in that one minute, the elector machine is uh, recording in movie mode, and so it's actually getting frames for across all of those gantry angles uh, and in a dynamic nature that is similar to what actually is happening when we're doing VMAT and uh, other arc therapies. And you can see here you get some uh, interesting plots so uh, to give, have a quick explanation um, you can see here on is the gantry angle of, of each of these images um, uh, so going from minus 180 degrees to plus 180 degrees um, here is the field center minus the ball bearing center um, Notice, notice that each dashed, uh, dashed line here is a counterclockwise beam, uh, and each solid line is a clockwise beam, and um, uh, yeah, as you can see that they're like that. So we'll go to this next one. This has actually helped us uh, diagnose certain, or well, find certain things. And so this is uh, there's a beam now that is actually non-clinical, because um, we noticed that for some dose rates. Um, for some gantry angles while in dynamic mode, um, the the beam position would actually jump on the order of one mil. So you can actually see here uh, in the in the y-axis, uh, you've got this field center minus ball bearing center. The gantry angles down here. Um, this is these are different dose rates. So um, these this blue and green correspond to uh, a a a half dose rate um, beam, and the green and red no, sorry the red and orange correspond to a full dose rate beam. And so you can see when it's at half dose rate um, going counterclockwise, uh, it, it goes up to here and does a jump um, in, in between these cardinal angles, uh, which you wouldn't have seen at those static angles. Would have seen this small jump here, maybe if you were doing minus 90, but maybe you would have just seen this. But nevertheless, uh, one mil instability in our beam has been picked up using this tool. And so it's quite helpful in our clinic. Oh, we've had it uh, just last year. We had a master's student who came through, and uh, he made a uh, a vac bag auto segmentation tool. Um, he is also uh, yeah. And the goal for this project here was actually to uh, trial uh, neural network auto segmentation with the goal to create a QA tool um, to be independently check um, uh, the contours that are undergone within our clinic. Um, this 
uh, there was a given the, the nature of vac bag contouring and um, how it takes a, a large amount of time, but um, it, it seemed like a uh, a candidate, however, where it actually could be used where the, the as long as a, a a radiation therapist was to step through each slice, um, this auto contouring of the back bag would be okay to be used uh, in the clinical environment. So let, I'll let, I'll let uh, Matt Cooper talk to his project and show, show, give a bit of a show and tell on this one. This video highlights a 2D UNET model trained to infer vacuum bag contours from canine CT scans for radiotherapy. The imaging series is exported from the treatment planning system to a DICOM server running remotely. From here, the DICOM service provider produces inference via TensorFlow. Once completed, a DICOM service user forwards the images and RT structure set back to the treatment planning system where it can be imported. This software handles multiple exports by storing jobs in an inference queue. Clinical acceptance testing has shown a 30 minute improvement in contouring time per patient. This model was deployed under a prototype warning and is currently being utilized on all new patients to reduce contouring times. Awesome. Now, interestingly, in the uh, most recent, well, in a recent uh, TG report, TG275, um, they highlighted a range of, uh, they did a, a failure mode analysis where uh, they were highlighted a, a range of issues that we should be addressed in, uh, that we, sh we should be addressing in our clinics. Um, and number one and number seven were both to do with contouring. Uh, being able to have an auto contouring tool that is independently checking out contours uh, could pick up a range of these, uh, range of these mistakes that can occur. Uh, it'd be great to have that automated. So what next? Be keen for you to collaborate with us. You can you can collaborate by uh, using the tools and providing feedback. You can collaborate by improving our documentation. You can collaborate by submitting code or bug fixes or or making it work for your system when it might not. There might be something that in your system particularly that doesn't work for. Um, whatever it is, I'm really keen for you to reach out. Um, send me an email, uh, me at simonbigs.net, um, or reach out via the mailing list. Uh, certainly, if you have questions about how to use it, I'd much prefer using the mailing list because responses on the mailing list, uh, uh, everyone gets to see that. That's helpful. I want to acknowledge all the people. Well, I can't acknowledge all the people. I wouldn't be able to. The n number of books. I wouldn't have enough books in this room to be able to acknowledge all the people who or who've written software that we've used to have these three tools just here that I've shown you. Uh, it's huge. Uh, but nevertheless, in the medical physics ecosystem, people who have shared their code. Um, uh, I've, I've uh, written up here, and oh yeah, great! Shout out to them. That's uh, what I've done. Wouldn't be possible without what they've done. So thank you. Download these slides, um, or or access this video from these links up here. I'll copy those into the chat window. Thank you.